Hello and welcome to the third lecture on earthquake resistant design of structures. In this lecture, our focus will be on the development of design spectra from the response spectrum and on developing the basis of static analysis of structures. In the last lecture, we discussed the development of a DVA response spectra. The questions that arose from the discussion into last lecture are number one, did the structure behave linearly in the development of the response spectrum? The answer to this is the response spectrum can be developed for linear elastic as well as for non-linear elastic systems. Our design was considering the behavior of the structure to be linear. Second question, are there any drawbacks of the response spectrum method? The answer to this would be yes. The method is based on number of assumptions ranging from considering a linear response with the numerical determination being controlled by time restraint. The system uh, considered only the first mode of response, although more can be input. The response is the maximum or peak and would not occur over a considerable time and would thereby overestimate the behavior. There are three to four methods of earthquake resistant design of structures. The easiest, simplest and the convenient method is the static analysis. In this method, the structure is assumed to have forces increasing linearly from the base towards the top of the structure. These lateral forces are determined from the base shear. Each story could be analyzed for the lateral forces. The important condition in this method is that the forces are all in the first mode of vibration of the structure or in the fundamental mode. The other method is the time history analysis. In this method, acceleration time history is applied on the structure directly through an application software. The structure can be analyzed for different time histories. This method is however complicated and involves studying response to many different time histories. The third method of earthquake resistant design is done by modal spectral analysis. In this method, corresponding to each mode, there are response spectra that are applied to the structure. The modal static superposition based on certain combination rules of various modal responses is done. This we will study as we move on in this course. This method is widely used and gives much better response of the structure. It follows that if we have response spectrum, we can go ahead with the design spectrum analysis. This would pave the way for static analysis of the structures to earthquake. It would also become the foundation for the modal analysis of the structure. So the development of design spectra is the first step into understanding the design of structures for earthquakes. When we look briefly into history, it was the Applied Technology Council report in USA in 1918 that paved the way for the development of seismic regulations. This report was followed by the Universal Building Code and other building codes in the USA. Given that there are multiple building codes in the USA right now, the crux of the design is the development of the design spectra for earthquakes. Spectral shapes were taken from around 104 earthquake records of Western USA and an average graph for spectra was obtained for different time periods of structures. You must understand how a response spectra was obtained for a single earthquake spectra that is from El Centro in the previous lecture. The spectra is for a 5% damping which is damping expected in concrete structures. There are number of curves obtained for different soil types. The curve was further normalized over a time period. The normalization is done for range of time period and soil profiles. The design spectra is adopted by the courts in USA in around 1992. The first point of this design spectra is that uh, the acceleration spectra rather than the deformation or velocity spectra is preferred in the codes as it can provide lateral forces on multiplying by the mass. 
uh, the second point is that the normalized graph here is in terms of value of maximum ground acceleration because each earthquake would have different ground accelerations. The third point is that the design spectra varies with the time period of the structures. Fourth point, the design spectra also varies with the soil conditions and this is obtained by recording acceleration response for different regions. And fifthly, the design spectra is applicable to different regions with varying soils by doing microzonation of areas. What is inferred from the U US design spectrum? The spectral acceleration for the structure reached to about 2.5 times the maximum ground motion as you can see in the figure earlier. Number two, the spectral acceleration or the pseudo acceleration response is lowest for structures in rocky soil. Now we have, apart from the US methods of determination of design spectra, the Euro codes, Euro 8, provides the design spectra. The base curve of the Euro code resembles the US design spectrum curve. The initial part of the curve resembles the displacement control on which uh, platform it's constant and then uh, till after to TC till after TB after TC till TD the velocity control and finally uh, it there is a displacement control after uh, the TD portion has been reached the set of equations that details which are given here is for reference but they will not be required to be explained here uh, because we'll be concentrating on the IS codes. The Indian design code for earthquake resistant design is IS 1893. The design spectra has more resemblance to US codal spectra. This curve is given for different soils. There are three curves here for soft soil for medium soil and for rocky soil. The curves are valid for 5% damping and the maximum spectral acceleration that can be seen here is uh, for the uh, soft soil and for the rocky soil there is the least spectral acceleration. Now there are the set of equations that are given here on the right for reference for the variation of the spectral acceleration coefficient S A by G with respect to the time period of the structures. Now this design spectra would have a set of equations for each rocky soil for which S A by G has got a particular set of equations and this is lesser in value uh, as compared to that for the medium soils and the a set of equations for soft soil has the maximum uh, value for S A by G. Having now known the design spectra, the main inquiry would be how to identify the soil type for a particular region. For this, a seismic risk mapping is to be done and the microzonation maps are to be developed as shown here for San Francisco. Although it's based on the maximum predicted earthquake, it identifies soil type, faults and fissures in the soil and can be conveniently used replacing the soil type in the design spectra so that a spectral response of structure is obtained for a particular area. Once the design spectra has been determined and established in codes, next comes the uh, step for towards the analysis. This deals with determining the base shear of the structures. In module 1, lecture 1, we discussed that a static equivalent shear force VB is equal to FS is equal to KU. The other way of going about determining base shear would be from the inertial forces whereby VB is equal to AH into W. This is conveniently known as design seismic base shear. Whereas IS 1893 
takes this value as VB is equal to AH into W. US code takes the value of VB equal to CS into W. W here is the seismic weight of the building that we will be discussing in subsequent lecture and AH is the design horizontal seismic coefficient of the structure. Now, how do we determine the value of AH, the design seismic coefficient? It's given by IS8093 by this equation, AH is equal to Z by 2 into I by R into S A B G. S A by G, as we know, is the spectral acceleration, that's the design spectra that we have already discussed. Now comes the Z factor, that's the zonal factor. Now this is based on the maximum considered earthquake. Now the Z factor is given here in table 2, it's taken from IS 1893 and it varies from 0 0.1 in zone 2 to 0 0.36 in zone 5, the very severe intensity zone. Now these will be explained, the zones will be explained in the next lecture. Now what we are concerned here with is that Z factor given it's known that it gives us the maximum considered earthquake that can be expected in an uh, region. Z by 2 in as a factor in AH gives us the design based earthquake. So it's a 50% of the Z factor. Then comes the importance factor I. Now I'll be explaining this and finally the R which is the response reduction factor in this equation. Now and before we discuss this further let's take the equation given by the US building codes and this US building codes gives us the factor CS as the uh, acceleration coefficient. Now this CS is equal to 1.2 AV into S divided by R T raised power 2 by 3. Now here AV is the coefficient representing effect to peak velocity related acceleration. S is the soil profile characteristics. R is the response modification factor as was in the earlier equation and T is the fundamental time period of the structure. So we have the importance factor I. Now this importance factor I in IS 1893 for AH it depends on the functional use of the structure. Besides it also depends on the economy of the structure and further many other parameters. Now a table is taken from IS 1893 wherein I factor gives us the importance factor and this for a important service and community buildings such as hospitals, schools, monumental structures, emergency buildings like telephone exchange, television stations, radio stations, railway stations, fire station buildings, large community halls like cinemas, assembly halls and subway stations and power stations it's taken as 1.5 and exceptions for all other buildings it's taken as 1. Now the, the note here is that the design engineer may choose values and importance factor greater than those mentioned above uh, so it's left to the uh, design engineer uh, competence. Number two the buildings not covered in serial number one that's for 1.5 and 2 that's for 1 above may be designed for a higher value of I depending on the economy strategy considerations like multi-story buildings having to several residential units and the third one is that this does not apply to temporary structures like excavation scaffolding etc of short duration which may be taken for a lesser value the third factor is the response reduction factor in the equation we have mentioned and that's R factor. Now this R factor depends on the perceived seismic damage performance of the structures. Given that the structures may be of different types and uh, we have structures uh, mostly of RC 
structures that we'll be designing during the course. Uh, there are two types of RC structures, the ordinary RC moment resisting frame or MRF and where the R factor is taken as three. The other one is the spe special RC moment resisting frame SMRF where the response reduction factor is taken as five. Now ordinary um, RC frames OMRF are mostly designed as per IS456 while as F SMRF takes the ductile cores into consideration and designs the structures for 13920 cores as well. Then this uh, table goes on to talk about the steel braces uh, steel frames with concentric braces and eccentric braces wherein R factor is 4 and 5 then it talks about the steel moment resisting frame designed as per SP6 where again response reduction factor is taken as 5. Other buildings with shear walls and this uh, goes on and the list is, uh, is still the table is still larger than what has been given here and for reference you can look at IS1890. So finally while concluding this lecture the questions that arise are the design base shear in codes is it different from the maximum base shear and the second thing why do we go for it why do we go for the maximum for the design base shear now the structure that's shown here if we take no design basis and uh, we just uh, solve the structure for the maximum base shear then VB would be simply equal to the spectral acceleration S A by G into W. But for the taking the design basis into consideration, the due to the zone factor that Z, there is a reduction of 10 to 36 percent uh, from the uh, actual base shear. Then due to the importance of the building, uh, it may be increased from 1.5 1 to 1.5 times further there is a further reduction due to the response reduction factor and this reduction may be to 20 to 33 percent so overall if we uh, do the mathematics the overall response considered for design is just 11 percent for highest zone in India then the question arises why is it so small value of the design base shear the answer lies in the ductility and the brittle behavior of the concrete and that we ha will have to take in the subsequent lectures inshallah and thank you